just be aware of them, they're close to you, and they've also been given a pin. So that's very important for this presentation. Um, I have something very simple and very, very um, uh, meaningful to me to share with all of you. So I hope to get through 18 minutes with sharing something that I hold very, very dear to me in my life. All right? How many of you in this group here, I see a largely young lot, uh, Praveen included. Uh, uh, the young lot of you, how many of you want to be successful in life? Put your hands up. All right, okay. Okay, super. That's quite a lot of you. All of you who put your hands up, take the balloon right now and blow into it. Blow air into it. I want you to blow as much air into it as you want to be successful in life. All right, don't get too greedy. Otherwise, the damn thing will burst. All right? As much success as you want in your life, let the balloon be representative of success. Some of you may find it very difficult to do. Some of you might find it very easy to do. Just like success in life. All right? And this is how successful I, I could manage this all air I had. All right? Be very, very conscious of that pin very close to you. Be very careful that the pin doesn't touch the balloon because it's going to blow things up and we don't want that to happen. So hold on to the balloon for the rest of your presentation right now. Please, please hold on to your balloon if you can secure it and you've already done that. You're a great engineer already. If you guys are still learning, you'll hold on to it on your hand. Don't let the air out of the balloon. Don't let somebody else's pin poke yours. Don't let your own pin poke yours. So we're going to talk about success first. All right? Everybody settled? Um, what is success? Yes, shall we go on, guys? Yes, super. Uh, what is success? Uh, there is nothing, there's nothing intrinsic about success. We don't know what success is. It's like asking what is God. It's a question that we really cannot answer. So I asked, around a lot of youngsters in my team, I work with a lot of uh, 17 to 22 year olds and I ask them, what are the signs of success? What are the symptoms of success? And this is what I heard from them, I heard wealth. Wealth was a sign of success. Health was a sign of success because usually if you are very happy in life, you tend to be, uh, and you're successful, you tend to be happy, you tend to be happy, you tend to be usually well, uh, well endured health wise. Uh, wisdom usually comes with success, usually apparently. Uh, relationships, successful relationships, you're doing very well in your relationships is a symptom of success. Achievement is a symptom of success. Fame usually is a symptom of success. And most importantly, the social knowledge of all of these things. If you had a lot of wealth and nobody knew about it, and nobody gave a damn, it doesn't really count. All right? The social knowledge that you're healthy and your relationships are fine, that you're famous, you need to be socially aware. I mean, if people know you, then you're famous. And if you're rich, it's nice to have people know. Then I ask them, why success? Why should one be successful? You all raise your hands. Do you want to be successful? Why do you want to be successful in life? Again, these are the answers. I hope they echo your uh, ethos as well. Uh, I don't know. It was an answer I got from a lot of my team members. Uh, to prove a point. Fair enough. Self-respect. Hey, Success is a sign of self-respect. It respects, I respect myself more. I want others to respect me as well. And constant improvement, because that's what life is all about. It's all about constant improvement, and therefore one gets more successful. It's a sign of constant improvement. And uh, somebody told us that it was important. All right, that's very, very crucial. Somebody is constantly telling you all around you why it is important to be successful. Who told you? From your little child, your parents probably told you, you know, beta, you should grow up and you should be very, very successful. We want you to be very, very successful. We don't want you not being successful. We want you to be successful. Your teachers kept telling you, saying, you know, I want you to get great marks because great marks is an indication of being very good and that will make you things better. And uh, teachers constantly are benchmarking us at all points of time to make sure that we are better and therefore successful. Our peers are a very great source of stress and also motivation and constant one-upmanship happening. Peer pressure comes from that. Uh, our seniors in our life who we look up to, hey, I want to be like that person in my life. In my life, I want to be that person. I want to be like that person. So you emulate a lot of your seniors 
and partners, your boyfriends, girlfriends, wives, husbands, as the case may be, are constantly urging you to become better and more successful at all points of time. So basically, everybody, everybody told you that it's important to be successful. Failure. <clears throat> Not a nice thing to be talking about, but what is failure? Again, like God, we don't know what intrinsically failure is, but we have symptoms of failure. I asked my young team again, they said, economic status not being so good is a sign of failure. Uh, ungroomed, you look ungroomed and you look unkept and you probably, it's a, it's a sign of being a, a, a failed person. You're not connected with the right people. You're not in the company of right people or you're not connected to the right people, you're probably a failure then. Uh, bad habits, you've been fallen prey to a lot of bad habits and therefore you probably are a failure. General chaos in your life. Uh, relationships are not going very well, you probably got divorced or you up or uh, you have a bad relationship with your parents, whatever. They said that's a failure. Uh, general non-compliance of any sort. Societal non-compliance. You're not the best student and you're not, the, you're not doing what the school wants you to do or the college wants you to do or the company wants you to do. Failure. Uh, unfortunately, sexual non-compliance is also seen as failure. It's very, very unfortunate, but we are in a very... Uh, uh, young society, we're just about 60 years old as a liberalized society and uh, as a liberalized society we're only about 20 years old. Uh, uh, sexual non-compliance, transgenders, uh, uh, bisexuals, homosexuals are seen as failures. It's very, very unfortunate but that's again young people thinking that. And general lack of direction, lack of motivation, not knowing what you want is seen as a symptom of being a failure. Uh, who told you? Again, I'm going to just going to ditto the same slide and I'm going to save myself one minute. It's the same people. Parents told you what a failure was, your teachers told you what a failure was, your peers are constantly telling you what a failure is and your bosses are and your seniors are and everybody's telling you all of it. Most of us don't want to be failures, none of us want to be failures. Uh, we don't like it, we fear it, we don't like it one bit. It's like that snake. It's just like that snake. It's just like that snake because most of us fear the damn snake. We don't like that snake. We hate it. It just makes us feel awful. Some of us don't fear it, but still would not like that snake very close to you right now. Right? We're like, hey, I'm not scared of it, but I don't want it in this room, basically. Some of us will say, I don't fear it, I don't mind it here. If I kept it before you right now, I'll we'll know the true reaction. But I, either way, none of us want it in this room right now. We would like it, we'd like the knowledge that it's outside this room, not in this room. If I told you there's a snake in this room right now, I, I, I don't know how the reactions would be. Alright? In fact, if I told you right now, um, okay, why, why, why do we feel this way about snakes or about, about failure in general? It, it's irrational. It looks unhappy. It looks like uh, it's not a place that we want to go to. It looks a little dark. It looks unknown. It looks like that X. We don't know what it's all about, dude. We don't know what it's like, we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there and that's exactly the fear of snakes. Uh, fear of failure is something like that. We don't want to go there. We don't want to know how deep failure is and what it feels like and uh, tell me about great success stories. Around a snake, uh, what do we feel like? We feel, we tiptoe around this snake. Hey dude, I'm not encroaching into your space, you're not encroaching into mine. We tend to freeze, we freeze up, our body just naturally cues ourselves to freeze, we break out into cold sweat. Like it or not, we are near it and we are like sweating and you are feeling a little chill running through your spine. Uh, hairs raise automatically, it's an involuntary action. Our throat get dry, we are like, oh damn, I can't even swallow, I am like choking right now. Uh, numbing of general senses, all your senses become very, very numb and if I threw a snake at him right now, he will be like, what the heck? Alright, that's a natural reaction. I said, what the... <laughs> uh, success, although, is very sweet, awesome, it's happy, it's a great place to be, it's like super, who told you? I, I don't know, I mean, all of you want to be successful, you're not there yet, but somebody is constantly telling you, saying, it's awesome, it's brilliant, oh, it's like that class. It's like happy Santa Claus, you know, it's like, uh, uh, and uh, at this point of time I'd like you to uh, refill your balloons if any air is going out of it because your balloon should be as 
big and rotund and happy as Santa is because that's how successful you want to be. Alright, so at this point of time people who is uh, balloons are pushing right now, please uh, oof it. Alright, okay. Um, love of Santa Claus, what does it make us do? Alright, love of Santa makes us do the following thing. It makes us desire Christmas. Alright, it makes us wait for Christmas all year round. It makes us party when Christmas happens. It makes us love getting gifts and love gifting as well. Oh, I'm so sorry. You'll do well in life some point of time though, don't worry. Alright, it's okay. Alright, it can happen. So exactly what I want to tell you about actually. Um, you enjoy gifts, you enjoy gifting during Christmas. And then want Christmas to last forever. You don't want it to end at all. You want it to last forever. And when it's over, you feel really bad. You're like, ah, oh, Christmas is gone. And you wait for it the entire year. You want it to come all over again. Fear of snakes, at the same time, makes us build high walls. It makes us worry. It makes us constantly worried. It makes us wear thick footwear, protective clothing. Keep checking around corners. You don't know where it is. Somebody told me there's a snake somewhere here. Dude, where, where, where is it, man? All right? And it makes you sleep less. And it, you constantly try not to think about it. In fact, I challenge you right now, make sure that you don't think about a giant hooded cobra. Please, right now, for the next two minutes, do not think of a giant hooded cobra, guys. Just don't. So clearly, hypothesis, I'm just stating it, love of Santa Claus makes us do different things from fear of snakes. Ergo, desire to succeed is completely different from fear of failure. They are completely two different things. Fearing failure is a completely different action altogether. It will lead to completely different steps in your life. Desire to succeed at the same time will make you do completely different things. Do not think that these two are connected. What is the difference between the man who is actually playing with snakes, alright, playing with snakes and he's handling it and uh, all of that and the other guy who is fearing even the thought of it, alright, assuming, of course I've got a peculiarly uh, very happy man with it, alright, so... <laughs> Uh, assuming both of them fear snakes, assuming both of them definitely do not have a lack of fear of snakes. What's the difference between a person who says, okay, I'll enter into the cage and the person who says, I don't even want to get into the cage? The difference is very simple. It's only the difference is the reaction to fear. The reaction to fear. One person says, I know I fear that. And I probably want to try get over it. I want to try getting over my fear of it and says, okay, I'm going to tiptoe into that cage right now. And try and get close to it. And somebody's going to say, touch it, touch it, it won't hurt you. And you touch it and say, ooh, it feels cold. Okay, okay, all right, okay, all right, I got it. As opposed to the person who says, ah, bullshit, I'm not even entering that room. I've heard it's horrible, it's awful, I don't want to feel all those things right now. The difference between these two is, a person who fails, especially a person who fails, is not a failure. The person who didn't even try probably is. The person who failed has definitely given us indication that I'm willing to try this. I want to know what it's all about. I have, I acknowledge that this has been, I've been warned about, but I need to figure it out for myself. I want to know how dangerous the snake can be. I will go with forewarning and you have told me that it won't bite. Okay, it won't bite. I won't come and share, touch it and see. A person who has failed especially is not a failure because a person who has failed has these following benefits that happen to him. It happens that he has a willingness. It shows that he has a willingness to overcome. It shows that he has an eternal and an intrinsic strength of character and most importantly he has the benefit of experience. He has the benefit of the experience of that failed attempt of saying, I've been there, I know how deep it is, I know what to do, I know what not to do most importantly at this point of time. 
And if the route to Santa Claus had a pit of snakes in it on the way, the guy who's failed is more likely to reach Santa. The guy who's failed many times is even more likely to reach Santa. And every route to Santa Claus is filled with pits of snakes. Beware of Santa Claus. Because of these reasons. He makes us yearn for Christmas all year long. He makes it want to last forever. It makes you feel bad when it's over. Then you want it all over again at the end of it. Not very different from describing a good night of whiskey or coke or any kind of habit inducing substance, marijuana. Success. Ergo, success is addictive. Much like Santa Claus, much like Coke, much like any kind of habit forming substance, success is very, very addictive. Don't overdo it. I've seen many people in my life who enjoy the success and are very scared and insecure about letting it go. And they fear letting it go. They don't want it to end. And it's an illusion that it's not going to end. It's an illusion that it's going to last forever. It's an illusion that it's going to come back and I'm going to feel that again. Ergo, and the stupid idiotic math equation which I'm trying to palm off to a bunch of engineers sitting in front of me, too much failure is very similar to too much success. Too much success is not a good thing. Too much failure is not a good thing as well. Uh, pardon this uh, mathematical action right now. Too much and too much cancel each other and you get success is equal to failure. I'll just sum up right now very, very tersely. Fearing failure will not lead to success, guys. Failing does not make you a failure. Character plus long playing will lead to many successes and many failures. And people will stupidly think that you're a success if you play the game for long enough and you had so many successes you also had so many failures, nobody knows about the failures, they'll remember the success, and they'll by mistakenly call you a success. And success is equal to failure, you don't have to take my arithmetic logic for it. Um, at this point of time, actually if anybody feels like, pop your bloody balloon. Don't hold on to it. It basically tells me two things. It tells me that you don't fear failure. You're not going to hold on to your success for all the time. You're going to experience it in equal measure. Success, failure at all points of time. I, I felt like a lot of people are clapping for me. This is my way. But that's exactly what it's all about. Guys. Don't hold on to it too much. Don't hold on to the fear of failure as, as, as well. It's easy to let it go. Let it go. It doesn't make a bloody difference. Unless you've tried it, you will never know what it is. And as I said, don't take my mathematical equation too seriously. Rudyard Kipling said the same thing. I'm just going to quickly read this poem out to you because it makes a lot of sense to me. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. But make allowances for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting. Or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thought your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two damn impostors just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the thing you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools, if you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it in one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never word, breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings and not lose the common touch neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you and if all men count with you but none 
too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, will be a man, my son. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.